right, we're ready for our Saturday night service. The Lord reigns, let the people tremble. The Lord is great in Zion, he is high above all people. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. Awesome is the Lord. Holy. So let's bless Lord the Lord, Lord all our souls and all that are, Amen. is Amen. within us. Let us bless Amen. his holy name. Amen. 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 Great to have the church family gathered together as we get into the word and we worship together. And let's bow for prayer. Jesus, thank you that you are our heavenly father, that you love every person here tonight those that are on their way. Lord, we ask that you just pour out your sweet, sweet spirit upon us. Lord, that we would leave this place knowing that we've been in the presence of the living God. Cast all your cares upon him because he loves you. Lord, just uh, fill this house. Fill this house with the spirit of the living God tonight. We love you. Lord, may this not just be a religious thing that we do. May it not be ro- routine. Lord, may we get excited about being in your presence. Send down your rain, the gospel rain. Send it down upon us tonight, Lord. Fill this house. We love you and praise you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together. Why don't we go ahead and stand? Open up your voice tonight and worship the Lord. If you don't open it up, what we're doing up here, this is just a music recital. This is just a music recital. If you don't join in and worship the Lord, amen. Thankful rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Wait upon. The right as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Let's keep waiting. We're waiting on the Lord. The monitors went off, Bill. Thank the right as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, wait upon the Lord. Thank the right as we wait upon the Lord, wait upon the Lord, wait upon the Lord our God. You reign forever. Our hope, our strong deed. You are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. You do not take to the world. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up. On the wing, like eagles. Wait on the Lord. Thank for eyes as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Thank for eyes as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord our God, you reign forever, our hope, our strong deliverer, you are the everlasting God, the 
everlasting God. You do not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. know have you not heard the everlasting God the creator of the ends of the earth does not become weary or tired his understanding is inscrutable he gives strength to the weary and to him who lacks might he increases power and though youths grow weary and tired and vigorous young men stumble badly yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength and they will mount up with wings like eagles and they will run and not get tired, and they will walk and not become weary. Amen. Our God, you reign forever. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting. The everlasting God, you do not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak, you comfort those in need, you lift us up on the wings, like you're the everlasting God. You're the everlasting God, the everlasting God. You do not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up. On the wings, thank ye God. Praise his name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, if you're here tonight, he'll, uh, he'll give you a nice touch. He wants to meet with you. I said he wants to meet with you. Amen. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions. Come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting there with open arms. For God so loved the world that he gave us in one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. Oh God, so love the world that he gave us his one and only son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever.
Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting there with open eyes. From whom all blessings flow. Praise Him. Praise Him. For the wonders of His love. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. From whom all blessings flow.
and I I'm desperate for you Oh Lord And I This is the air I breathe, your holy presence, living in me, this is my day. I'm lost without you. Oh Lord, I'm lost. So I'm lost without you. We're lost without you. Oh Lord, we're lost without you. And I'm desperate for you And I I'm desperate for you Oh Lord And I I'm lost without you This is the air that I breathe. This is the air that I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living. Father, we are lost without you. Let that be each of our hearts cry tonight, Father, that we breathe in your Holy Spirit and that we cling to the hem of your robe so tightly. Father, we all know how lost we would be without you. And we thank you, Father, so much for your word that promises us that you will never leave us or forsake us, that you have adopted us into your family as sons and daughters 
always welcome forever at the throne of grace. Father, we bless you and we honor you and we praise you, the Father of fathers, the best daddy we could ever have. Amen, amen. And we are celebrate you this weekend. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. You may be seated and the worship team is going to come back up here in a few moments. And, uh, you know, it's, it's at the end. Oh, at the end. <laughs> It's great to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. And, uh, you know, the scriptures talk about a woman who fears the Lord is to be greatly praised. Amen. And for the last year and a half, I've been dating a woman that fears the Lord. Amen. And uh, we got married two weeks ago. Congratulations! And Stephanie and Riley... And uh, she's a great, great woman, Amen. and she loves God with all of her heart, Thank and she Lord. wants to serve him and has been serving him, and uh, she just had a great, great granddaughter. What? Just one great. Oh, one great? <laughs> one, one great. A couple weeks ago. In the dog <laughs> But she has 13 grandchildren. 13 grandchildren. The family got a lot bigger. So you will see her here every Saturday night, Sunday, Yay. you know, during the week. And, yeah. and I want to thank Dan for the great job that he had, uh, that he did on the Wednesday night service and last two, uh, last two weeks ago on a Saturday night service. He did a fantastic job. Amen. We listened to all the services online. Um, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning. We listened to them all. And, uh, they were great, you know, fantastic. You know, remember Ben Box last weekend and Dan, and, uh, you know, praise the Lord for what he's doing and, you know, his faithfulness. God is faithful. Tell the person next to you, God is faithful. God is faithful. He is faithful. And uh, take out your sermon notes that you had, you were given. If you don't have them, um, go to the door or go to Will over there, and uh, he'll make sure that you get them. Um, tithes and offerings, you know, they'll be walking around with the basket and just put it in the basket. Actually, um, when was it? Was it last Sunday we went to a church? And uh, it was really neat. I mean, I try to go to church, you know, whenever I'm gone on Sunday mornings just to see what's going on in other churches. And uh, I, you remember the plates? Remember the plates? And, uh, you know, we... <laughs> going, oh, the plates, you know, and we hadn't seen those for ages. And I was thinking, man, I'm, I, I like the bags, you know, just, it holds more, yeah. Well, they were quite a rich church, I'll tell you. They were tithes and offerings, man, it was amazing. And, uh, but God is good, and he is doing a great work, and I'm so blessed, you know, to be part of this body. And I, I want you to open up your Bibles to Psalms 105. You know, we're talking... Um, this weekend is Father's Day, as you all know, and a lot of things are happening. We're actually, tomorrow at our 10 o'clock service, we're actually dedicating my grandson, David Jeffrey Bishop, tomorrow morning. And, uh, you know, it, it talks about honor thy father and thy mother, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 2 to 3. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise. And the promise is that it will be well with you, and you may live a long life on the earth. I mean, honor your father and your mother. And uh, sometimes we haven't had the greatest examples of a father or a mother here on this earth. But we have a heavenly father, which is the best example. And he is trustworthy and he is faithful and we can believe in him so our father in heaven took great lengths not only to make himself known to this world but also to give us reasons to trust him Amen. we can trust him you know and it talks about waiting on the lord wait on the lord you know and be faithful to the lord while you're waiting you know, I've been waiting for a year and a half, and there she is, the beautiful love of my life, you know. And she is so, I mean, when you get to know her, she is so neat. 
and so exciting. And you begin to investigate in God's word and reflect on God's faithfulness in the past and also in the future. And we become stronger in our faith. Does anybody here need to be stronger in your faith? I do. We all do, right? We need to be more trusting in God than we ever have before. This world needs to see Christians that love God with all their heart, all their soul, all their mind, all their strength, and their neighbor as themselves. We need to be transformed in the renewing of our minds. You know, our, our minds have been so filled with Netflix and TV and everything else for the last year and a half. You know, we need to get them, I mean, we didn't close, but we need to get back to God's word and be on fire for him. Where's the fire? Where's the fire in our lives for Jesus? And, uh, you know, I, I was thinking about this last year and a half and uh, the lockdown, you know, especially in California. And so many people have felt loneliness and they felt forgotten and they felt all alone. You know, like nobody cares about them. They've been passed up maybe and overlooked and, you know, they felt really insignificant. I felt like the world has passed them by the last year and a half. And, uh, you know, I don't know about you, but I've heard talking to a lot of people, they think that nobody cares about them. You know, so many, you know, uh, something happened to them or, you know, there's somebody in their family passed away or, you know, and it's like nobody knows. Nobody, you know, there's no fellowship. And that's why God said, do not forsake the fellowship of the gathering together of the saints, of the, those that love God and are called according to his purpose. We need that fellowship with him and that fellowship with one another. Can you imagine... A year and a half, people dying in hospitals or in senior homes or rest homes, and the family was not able to be there? Think about that. And then they couldn't even have a funeral service. What a tragedy, you know, this last year and a half has been. And so, you know people dying and all these other things that are going on people i can't believe here in california and maybe other places that <clears throat> from two years old all the way through seniors in high school they're going to require people to st the kids to still wear masks and the science says we always talk about what does the science say the science says the chances of them getting covid is 0. .000 something and we're still going to require them to wear masks. Two years old. Elementary kids. High school kids. You know, they, they still want that control over them. And so we're, we're in perilous times. You know, it says in the last days there will be perilous times. And I really believe we are seeing those perilous times. And, uh, you know, I, I when I was growing up, you know, my dad was such a great dad, Amen. my mom, Amen. and, you know, they, they were just wonderful. My mom will be here tomorrow morning, but, you know, when my kids were growing up, you know that song, I want to be like you, dad? I want to be like my dad, and he wanted to be like his dad, you know, in heaven, Amen. and, uh, you know, so I want to be like him. I want to serve as he served. And maybe there's some of you that are dads that you haven't, you know, really gotten on track with the Lord and with his program, and your kids suffered. But thank God you've got today. You're still alive. Amen. Everybody here still breathing? Praise his name. Amen. God can redeem what happened in the past, what the locusts have eaten. Amen. And so my kids, when they were growing up, things would break. They would bring them to me. I couldn't fix them. I couldn't read the directions. Mostly it was in China, Chinese. But uh, they would say, that's okay. That's okay, Dad. We'll take them to Mom. <laughs> and Mom, they said, can fix everything. And it was true. 
There was a racehorse by the name of Sea Biscuit. You ever hear of that racehorse? Sea Biscuit. Sea Biscuit. I was reading a little bit about him. The smallest racehorse, probably there ever was, had a very bad temper. He was hard to get along with, and nobody gave him, you know, a, a, any chance at all at ever winning a race. Nobody gave him a chance. And then there was a guy that came along and. His name was Tom Smith, and he saw something in that little scrawny racehorse that nobody else saw. And he says, this horse was born to run. This horse was born to run. And so everybody else had just kind of, you know, sloughed off on Seabiscuit, and he'll never be anything. But eventually, he became the national champion at racehorse. Won millions and millions of dollars, world renowned. And I was thinking about, you know, there's nobody here that is worthless. Tell the person next to you, you're not worthless. God says you have great value. You are important. You're the sea biscuits of our society. And, you know, no matter where you are right now spiritually, no matter where you have been, no matter what's happened in your past, you know, I mean, we're all sinners saved by grace. Amen. And thank you what God says. He says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to do what? Forgive us. Forgive us. Thank you. Blood of the Lamb. To put us back on that right path again. Amen. And so Psalms 105, you all got it, right? I, I think that, you know, being away just for a couple of weeks, you know, it, it just gives me a new perspective. And, you know, sometimes we need an attitude adjustment. And you might be that person today that needs an attitude adjustment and uh, a perspective check in our lives. Because sometimes we, we, we forget that God has never le left us. We have left him, Right. And when you feel abandoned and alone and, you know, you feel forgotten sometimes, guess what? God is still there. He's still there. And, uh, you know, so this, this psalm just struck out at me for Father's Day because our God is faithful. He's an awesome God. And he has a plan for every person here, a plan not for calamity, it says, but a plan for hope. A plan for hope and, uh, you know, success, it says, happiness, fulfillment. And, uh, I mean, if anything, God says right now, put your trust in me. Yes. <coughs> That's where we need to put our trust. Yes. Put your trust in me. He's still here. He's right here. Amen. He says, call out to me. I love you. Call out to me. And so, interesting enough, this psalm <clears throat> was written to a people that thought that God had abandoned them. It was written to a people that said, hey, God's forgotten about us. There's no hope. You know, it's like they're crying out to God, God, are you there somewhere? Amen. And this psalm was written in the midst of this. You know, uh, in the midst of people that were hurting. <clears throat> people that were lonely, people that were depressed. We all have ups and downs in life, don't we? We all have ups and downs in life. We all have trials. We all have tribulation. You know, but God says, don't waver. Be strong in the strength of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Be strong in the strength of the Lord. The Lord. Amen. And so they're questioning God's faithfulness. And they had made some bad decisions. Ever make a bad decision? A few bad decisions in your life? Yes. Maybe as fathers, maybe as mothers, you made bad decisions. This is Sandy Watson. <clears throat> Sandy has been my secretary for 30 some years. And she still likes me. And her husband, Jack. They've been so faithful. Amen. And so look at Psalms 105, verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. 
Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing psalms to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who rejoice, who seek the Lord, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face. How long? Forever. So write this down. Some things to think about. Some things to meditate on. Don't just play religion. Don't just go through the motions. You know, I mean, so many people, it says, in the last days, their love will grow cold. You know, hopefully your love's not growing cold for God. Hopefully your love's getting stronger and stronger and more vibrant. You know, you don't want to miss, you know, fellowship. You don't want to miss reading his word. You don't want to miss praying to him. And so here's some reasons to rejoice. He gives us ten commands here to action in just verses one to four. Ten commands to action. Give thanks. Sing. Tell of his wondrous works. Rejoice. Be glad. You know, they had forgotten about God's faithfulness. And so he's reminding him here. We can trust him. We can trust his faithfulness. You know, he says, engage your mind. Meditate on him. And when we think about so many things, what about just concentrating on him for a few minutes, a few, you know, hours during the week? You know, get one of those daily walks and, you know, listen to those daily walks. Get them out. Get into his word. Season after season, time after time, God had been faithful. God had pulled them through. And so he says, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Be grateful. Be thankful. You know, we have so many things to be grateful for, so many things to be thankful for. Every one of us here in this room. Man, I hope we have grateful hearts. I hope we have thankful hearts to the Lord. We have reason to rejoice. If you just stop and think about it. You know, I, I, I think it was Deborah that was saying a couple of weeks ago, we have showers. We have running water. We have electricity sometimes. We've got clothes. You know, we've got stores that have, are full of goods. We have so much to give thankful for. If you don't have a car, maybe you have a bike. Or maybe you have, what's those things called? They're scooters. Scooters. You know, we got buses, we got transit, we got, you know, trolleys, we got all these things. I mean, but do we have grateful hearts to the Lord? Praise your name, Lord. Amen. Are we thankful? Are we rejoicing? You know, I, I put this down on your outline. What are you finding your strength in today? What are you finding your strength in? If your strength is in money and riches, you're in trouble. If that's what you're living for, you're in trouble. If your strength is in material things, you're in trouble. They'll break down, you know, all kinds of things. I can remember I had a bike, and I loved that bike. I had a paper out as a little kid. I think it was my mom that ran over the bike. That was it for that bike. I was so depressed for, you know, a long time. You know, but today people are trusting in the government. The government will take care of all of our needs. You know, eventually it's going to bottom out. You know, the money is not even... It's, just paper anyway, but it's going to run out too, you know. I mean, what do you find your strength in? Look what it says in verse 4. It says, seek the Lord and his strength. What does Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 say? Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and allow him to direct your paths. Where's your strength? Hallelujah. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my salvation. 
He's our foundation. We need to get our eyes off of, you know, circumstances, yeah. money, things, and all these other things, and we need to look to the Lord. Get his guidance and direction. God is faithful. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. He's been faithful in your past. Just that you're here today says to me that God is faithful. Amen. And he will be faithful in your future. Amen. In Jesus if we keep Amen. our eyes in him, if we keep Amen. trusting in him. Amen. And so be faithful. Be grateful. Yes, the foundation of, of the Lord is our strength. Amen. And Think of where you were 10 years ago, 15 years ago, five years ago. What were you doing? You know, where were you? You know, I think sometimes God says, hey, just step back, take a deep breath, and watch me work. I love the verse that says, if I were to tell you what I'm doing in your midst, you would not believe it. You would not believe it. The yes. miracles and everything else that God is doing behind the, th the, behind the things. And so verse, verses 5 to 41, that, that whole section there, number two is be convinced. Be convinced. Be convinced in God. Be convinced in his word. Be con convinced in the facts, the science. Of God's word. Amen. It is tr he is trustworthy. Amen. And so he says in verse 5. Remember. His marvelous works which he has done. Remember his wonders. And the judgments of his mouth. O oh, seed of Abraham, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. He is Lord. Hallelujah. His judgments are in all the earth. Jesus, he remembers his covenant forever, the word which he commanded for a thousand generations. We're part of that thousand generations. Amen. The covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac, and he confirmed it to Jacob. And Israel is an to Israel is an everlasting covenant. That's right. You know, he's telling us is remember his covenant. Amen. You know, remember that covenant that he made is forever. And you are his people. You're sons and daughters of the King of Kings and the Praise Lord of Lords. Praise your holy name. And we're in a battle. Yeah. You know, I don't think Satan has, you know. Said, oh, well, I'm just going to back off for a while. Man, he's in full-time war gear. His schemes, you know, his lies. I mean, poison that he's spreading. One of the things I just read a report about the poison of drugs is pouring across the borders. Cocaine, meth, you know, heroin. I mean, it's gotten higher than ever. And it's being passed out. A lot of people, they say there's homeless. And so they can't pay for it, and so they rob and steal. And that's how they're getting their drug money. But remember God. I mean, we need to get back to God. We need to get back to church. Our society needs to get back to God's word. The truth of God's word. So here he says, Amen. remember the wonderful acts that I have performed step by step. And a lot of people say, well, where is God? He's still here. Yes, he, he just wants people to trust in him, to believe in him. So he talks about God's marvelous wonders in verse 5 to 8. And then in verses 9 to 40, 41, he talks about God's faithfulness. And then I put that phrase down in your outline. You got it there? God is nowhere. That's what the world says. God is nowhere. Where? Hey, it's just a fictional person. Jesus, just a fictional person that those Christians made up. And he's telling us through this whole psalm, you can believe it, all the different things that he had done for his people. And so the second part of that, it's still the same letters. Instead of God is nowhere, 
God is what? Now here. I mean, what a difference that is. That's the difference between a non-Christian and a Christian. Jesus is now here. God is now here. The Holy Spirit is now here. The Father is now here. Isn't that great? Be convinced of it. Read his word. See his faithfulness. He has not forgotten you. Israel, he has not forgotten Israel. He has not forgotten those that came after in the first century and all the way through today. God has not forgotten you. He has not left you. You can trust him. You can believe in him. The marvelous acts show God's faithfulness beyond any reasonable doubt. So that brings you to the third point. Be trusting. Dan talks about finances all the time. Because many people have wanted to get rich, and rich in our society could be minimal, really, compared to the rest of the world. But in wanting to get rich, they have wandered away from the faith. That's what the scriptures say. They've wandered away from the faith. Okay? They've wandered away from the faith. And they've suffered because of wanting to be rich. And then others, you know, I mean, can you trust God for relationships? Yeah, you can. Wait on him. Don't jump ahead of him, right? Because it'll lead to misery. Finances, marriages, kids. You know, there's so many kids that have wandered away from the Lord today. They say 70% of kids that were even raised in the church have wandered away during those middle years. But God said, bring them up, teach them the scriptures and the ways of the Lord. And when they're old, they will not depart from it. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, people out there that are, <clears throat> well, I'm just going to take a little time and get out in the world. And see what the world's like. Yeah, it's called rebellion. And they're prodigal sons and the prodigal daughters. And God says, don't stop praying for them. My grandmother kept praying for me and praying for me and praying for me and praying for me. And every time that I went to see her and I left, she would say, I'm praying for you, Dave. I'm praying for you. I don't know how things are going to work out. I don't know what's going to happen, but God does. God does. Think about the children of Israel at the base of the Red Sea, surrounded on all sides. We're going to die. That's what they thought. We're going to die. This is the last day. We're going to die. And God came through, didn't he? Praise his holy name. Amen. Time Amen. after time after yes. time after time, yes. God was faithful and God came through. Yes, he did. Hallelujah. They didn't know where they were going. God Praise says, hey, I'm going to lead you. I'm going to give you, what is it, a cloud by day and a fire by night. Hey, you just follow me. And that's what he says to us today. Just follow him. Follow that's his right. word. That's Just right. follow him. That's exactly right. Amen. He will lead you day by day. Trust God. Amen. And so that's what he's saying in the psalm. Trust God. What can you trust God for? Well, there's everything you can trust him for. And God will take care of you. You put him first. Put him first. You may still have doubts. You may, may still have questions. You know, the why... Why God? Why this? Why that? You may have problems. And I always thought this. Those things that we go through are opportunities for God to work. Amen. Yes. They're opportunities yes, for God to work. Yes, and remember that he is faithful. Hallelujah. I, I think, you know, the song that we sing sometimes, I want more of him and less of me. More of him and less of me. And uh, that God would be glorified. And you may think, well, look at my past failures. And Satan loves to bring up past, doesn't he? Look at all those past failures. 
And God says, no. From this point on, press on towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Keep pressing on. Don't look back. If you confess your sins, he says, they have been forgiven. And so God can take your past and he can weave it together for good. No person here in this room or watching online is beyond God's grace. None of us. Even when you don't feel it. That's why we don't rely on feelings. Now, I feel good when I've had pizza. <laughs> Chocolate chip ice cream. We had that a few times on our honeymoon, didn't we? It was good. Chocolate chip ice cream. But God can do anything and change anything. And he says, with men it is impossible, but with God what? How many things? Oh, oh, don't forget that. Don't forget God's faithfulness. Amen. That's what he's saying through this whole Psalm 105. Keep trusting him. Keep trusting him. Psalms 105, verse 42. For he remembered, God remembered his holy promise. And he remembered Abraham, his servant. And he brought out his people with joy, his chosen ones with gladness. I gave them the lands of the Gentiles. They inherited the labor of the nations that they might observe his statues and keep his laws. And keep his laws. You know, at the bottom there, it says God's past grace is reason to trust his future grace. Exactly right. Amen. And that's what he's telling the people here in Psalms 105. Look at how God was working in your past, and God's going to keep working in your future. He's going to keep pouring out his grace. Think about his faithfulness, reminders to us. Meditate, trust in his faithfulness. That gives us reason for hope. Every person here should have hope. Every one of us should have hope. We have a reason to trust the living God. Believe in him. And so I, I wrote this down. Don't ever stop trusting him. Don't ever stop trusting him. No matter how bad things look, no matter how... You know, the trials, the tribulations. Don't ever stop trusting him. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. This is for all of us. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, going back to Seabiscuit, one of the big races that Seabiscuit was in, he, they turned the corner going home, the last hundred yards or whatever it was. And they were neck and neck. And they started down that back straightaway. And um, the, the jockey kept thinking, man, I've got to hold him back. This other horse is going to wear out. I've got to hold him back, and then I'll let him go. And he says he, headed, he tried to hold him back. And Seabiscuit just kept going and going and going and wouldn't stop. And that little horse won by something like it's 17, 20 lengths. He didn't stop. And I thought about that. God says, run the race. Don't stop. Keep going. God is faithful. Don't ever stop trusting him. Don't ever stop believing in him. Don't let Satan... You know, it, it says, greater is he that is in where? You than he that is in the world. Don't let Satan hold you back. God's proven himself, and he is proven himself. In your marriages, in your career problems, in your financial difficulties, you just keep trusting him. Look at Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, what does he say here? The history of the church.
Man, God's given me some powerful messages Amen. for the next couple months. Bring it, on. it says in Acts chapter 1 that this is the, the account that I made, the former account that I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus be, began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up and after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs. Glory to God. Hallelujah. By many infallible proofs. Being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. You know, many infallible truths. Be convinced. The facts, the science is all there in God's word. Be convinced of it. Don't let anybody shake your faith. God says don't compromise. There's a lot of people compromising. You know, I hope that these verses, you know, in all of God's word, it's not just a small portion, all of God's word, I hope it motivates us. I hope it excites us. Man, I get excited about God's word. You should be excited about God's word, right? I mean, you should learn. You can read the same passage over and over again, and you can learn something new every time you read it. And I was listening to the sermons, and I go, I think I preached that some time ago. You know, but it was new. And it was like, wow, this is good stuff that Dan's preaching, or Ben Box was preaching, or whoever it was. This is good. I love it. Because his word is alive yes, that's right. and sharper than a two-edged sword. Word of God. Trust him. Keep believing in him. Amen. You know, the book of, of uh, James, it says, contend for the faith earnestly. We need to contend for the faith earnestly because we're in battles. There are so many battles happening in our government, in our schools. There's yeah. battles taking place. Right. Amen. And God says, stand firm. Amen. Be of good courage. I have overcome the world. The Be strong in the strength of the Lord. His name. Be strong in his faithfulness. Oh. You can trust you. him. I, I hope we get encouraged. You know, I hope that we find hope in Jesus because our hope is not going to be in our money and our finances and our jobs and these other things. They're okay, but our hope has to be in Jesus. I want you to bow your heads right now. Lord, I just ask you, fill this room with your presence, Lord. God, that we would walk with you, that we would have fellowship with you. Lord, faith comes from hearing the scriptures say and hearing from the word of God. God, let that word just seep down deep into our souls. Thank you for your faithfulness this Father's Day, Lord. Man, may there be faithful men and women here in this room ready to do battle because the battle is raging. Satan has not stopped. Man, in these days, his schemes, his devices are all around us. And yet in the midst of this, he says, I'll be with you. I will never leave you and never forsake you. I'm right here. Call out to me. Look at my marvelous deeds. Look at what I'm doing. Come into his arms. Be surrounded by his love, filled with the Holy Spirit, believing in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, having our sins forgiven and washed away, starting fresh, starting new every morning, waking up, getting excited about spending some time in your word, have fellowship with you. Loving it, just God's people. Beautiful Savior, everlasting. Thank you for our, 
our little body here, Lord. Blessed Redeemer, living word, worthy. Thank you for your presence here. Worthy is the Lamb. Fill this room. Fill this room with the presence of the living God. Those online, fill their houses, their apartments with your spirit, Lord. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Break me, mold me, melt me, use me, God. Use us for your kingdom, for your honor, for your glory, however you want to use us. This world needs to see people that love Jesus. Let's all stand. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely. All together worthy. All together wonderful. Light of the world. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Here I am. never know how much it costs. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sins upon that to us. He has been wonderful to us. He will be wonderful to us. And he's right now preparing a home, a mansion for us in heaven. And heaven's going to be so wonderful. The best thing you can imagine. You know, I just want to remind you, um, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Bible studies, Thursday night this coming week, you got a friend that doesn't know Jesus? 
bring in the church at 6.30 on Thursday night, and we're going to be showing the passion of Christ. You know, I just heard a story about the passion of Christ. They showed it in a prison, and here's these hardened criminals that were in the prison, and, you know, some of them without chances of parole and everything else. And at the end of the movie, they're all bawling. They're all crying. They realized what Jesus did for them on the cross. It was so powerful. So that'll be Thursday night at 6.30. Bring your friends and come and join us. And then on Friday night, we're going to have praise and worship night here at 6.30. Praise and worship night, 6.30. And uh, prayer. And then on Saturday, uh, we're doing the food giveaway. The flyer looks like this. You know, if you got friends that need food and you know, we'll be handing out a bunch of food, drive-by. But we also need volunteers to help. Yep. You know, it can't just be a few people, you know, that are helping. We need all kinds of people helping, praying for people. I mean, last time we did this, I mean, Dan and Barb and some others were praying for people as they were driving by and just asking them, hey, is there anything I can pray for you about? And besides those that were helping out by carrying the things out there and putting in their, their uh, trunks of their cars and, you know, seeing the joy that people had just receiving those gifts. So that'll be Saturday from 10 to 12. If you want to volunteer, you want to help out somehow, be here at 9, and we'll get everything set up and ready to go at 10 o'clock. And uh, so a lot of things are going on. And get involved. Get involved in God's service. If you give a cup of cold water in my name, Jesus you said. You give a food basket in my name. You did it to me. You be praying for somebody in my name. It's just like you're doing it to Jesus, he says. And that's what we want to do, this small church here. And uh, God wants to do a great work, a mighty work. So if you're a dad, there's a, a bookmark back there in the back and a flashlight and you know and the food bank will be open tonight and uh, God bless you what a great body we have invite others to come invite them to come that's all you can do you introduce them to Jesus back. invite them to come so God bless you have a great night and um, may God just do a mighty work in your life amen amen, amen. Let the songs 